Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match. Last one for tonight is going to be Ten Sticker versus Kane on Bandit Plains, one of my favorite maps, which I will go over because just in case people haven't seen it. I have shown this map fairly frequently, but it's good to be prudent. Anyway, map has a couple star good star spots for three spots here, like plus six here in the center and southeast, or to the north we have the center and northwest. It is radially symmetric. This area here is also a decent sp start spot if you want to be aggressive, but it is rather tricky to hold. Most of the maps you can see, plus 2.2 except for a few plus 1.8s here and there, I don't think it's particularly well set Like, it's not that surgically designed as far as metal spots go, so the fact that, say, this is a 1.8, not really something most people really notice. So basically, plus 2 around. Anyway, Kane is starting in the northwest side of the map, tan sticker at the south center. And let us begin. Kane going for Shield Light Factory. So this map, as you can see, is a fairly large map, but because it is a very hilly map, it tends to be more bot-focused. Vehicles can work. I'm pretty sure vehicles can actually go up these hills. I mean, along a very specific path. But overall, it is a bot map. Vehicles are just way too... It's just They're way too affected by the hills. There are like, these ramps here, which just slow the vehicles down. It kind of speed advantage vehicles would normally have on a large, relatively flat map like this. So bots are gone for instead. Thanstiker going for Cloaky Bot, and Kane going for Shield Bot. Kane going very early aggressive. Actually, both players... I don't know, no. Thanstiker went for an early Conjurer after that into Glaives, and seems to be using the Glaives primarily on defense. Yeah, a couple of them. One patrolling over to the east side, and the other couple... Double checking this hill here, so... Thanstiker is not being aggressive to start out. Kane, on the other hand, Moving in their bandits, they really want to get some kills in. Not sure how that's going to work, though. I mean, bandits, I'm pretty sure it'll work fine, because bandits are more powerful than glaives one-on-one. -on -one. For cost, it's about even, but one-on-one, -on -one, bandits will be glaives. However, glaives get worn down slower, because glaives heal. Glaives self-heal, bandits do not. Bandits have more firepower and health, however. And Dirtbag coming in here, so Kane does know Tanstiker is going for the cloaky bots. They know that they're going for the shield bots. And I should say Tansticker knows Kane's going for the shield bots. And Tansticker goes for the bandits. Sorry, Kane goes for the bandits. Tansticker continues to go for Glaives and Conjurer. And I think... I wonder if Tansticker's going to go... Assuming Kane's going to go for early Felon Ball. Because on a map like this, I don't see Kane going for early Felon Ball at all. And I don't think Kane, Tansticker does either. I don't think we're going to see a Sharpshooter until the first Thug comes out. Like Once Thugs and Outlaws actually come on the field, I think that's when Tansticker's going to go for the Sharpshooter and Endgame stuff. Sometimes you do see on smaller maps, like Badlands or Deadlands, mostly Deadlands, you sometimes do see very early Felon Ball. Bandit Plains is not one of those maps. This is a 16 by 16 map. It is very large. Well, for 1v1, it's very large. For team games, it's small. Well, medium-sized. Yeah, this is basically about as large as they get without tricks like Onyx Cauldron, where you have most of the map being unplayable cliffs. Dan Stickers, Commander... Forcing away the bandits. These bandits are not a threat to that commander at all. The bandits over here, however, are a threat to the glaives, but the glaives are a bigger threat coming in. Tansticker trying to make sure that they are not missing anything. Trying to take out these metal extractors, making sure that Kane has not taken them, and Kane has not. Having gone for the northwest, Kane is going to be taking this northeast side last. Tansticker, on the other hand, they're basically acting in the way that they're assuming Kane is acting. They're projecting a bit. An interesting thing, it's always kind of good to note, I suppose. I'm not sure how often this comes up. And I'm curious what other people's opinions are on it, but I've I've been kind of thinking that the way that people will often scout reflects the way that they themselves are playing. I mean, if they know their opponent, then yeah. But if we're dealing with more of a quick matchy setup like this is, where it's just people playing in the 1v1 room, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you see someone scouting in a certain direction, that you yourself should scout in the same direction, because they're probably building in that direction. So if you notice, oh, they're scouting my northeast, but I'm not building northeast. Oh, maybe they're building southwest. And that's exactly what's happening right now. I mean, the Southwest is being built. It's not being well defended. There's one Lotus, which... It's okay, I guess, but not great. Overall, though, it's fairly weak. So that would be a nice target. That'd be a juicy target for Kane. Kane, however, does manage to... Oh, no, not quite. Does manage to delay this expansion. Not really stop it. Doesn't kill the Conjurer. Kills off a Glaive. But like I said, Bandits suffer from attrition more than Glaives do. Like, a single Glaive, they could just go around here forever. I actually played a game last night where I ended up doing that. <laughs> like, fought off glaive after glaive after glaive with one hero glaive. That was kind of neat. It was in Iceland. Anyway, 
I'm not gonna bother showing it though, because it was kind of one-sided. <laughs> Regardless, Kane is... I mean, one-sided is, and I ended up winning. But I feel kind of bad, so... I'm not gonna show it. Tansticker, however, is going to be... Slightly behind. Slightly behind economically, slightly ahead militarily. That warrior is a good defense, but Kane not going for the southwest at all. Right now, I wouldn't recommend it, though. It's way too late. It's far too late. Tansticker is actually putting a lot more defenses than I think are probably relevant, but there it goes. Tansticker is assuming that Kane's going to attack that particular point. And now, to be fair, it's not a bad idea to have some defenses here, but the way the map is arranged... If this were Trojan Hills, I would say this is a really good idea. But because it's Bandit Plains and this is not really much of a path, I mean, if your opponent kind of has this area contested, they might go around the back here. Or they might go back here, up here, and then back through here to get to the back door of your base. But if they can, it's easier just to go through here. And because Kane already has this particular ramp pretty much under their control, they can just do that. So it's not the biggest deal. But it looks like that's exactly what Tansticker is doing. Tansticker is exactly going through the back here and then through into the back door. So Tansticker is defending against the very thing they're doing. So once again, I mean, at the very least in this particular case, Tansticker is definitely leading credence to my particular hypothesis about how players play. About trying to defend the very thing that they themselves are doing. Assuming that their opponent's going to do the exact same thing they are. Which is interesting, but Kane has no idea. Kane has absolutely no idea that Tansticker is doing this. They don't have... Do they have Raider? They don't have Raider on this area. They have no idea there is a Raider coming in. They have no idea that Tansticker is desperately defending the Southwest, forgetting the fact that Kane has control over this ramp right here, so they might as well go for the more straightforward approach. And this area is completely undefended, too. I'm a bit surprised. Because, yeah, sure, this is kind of important, but this area... This blocks both this ramp and this ramp, and to an extent, this ramp. This area here blocks all of it. and But here, the nice thing about this is that if they're going along here, oops, going along here, then you can still block it if it's in the center. Anyway, Tansticker is going to be not doing too much here. Kane, at this point, they've taken a pretty good chunk of the map. They've taken the entire northwest corner. Tansticker taking the entire south side. Economies are neck and neck, though Tansticker is actually a little bit easier to to defend, and now this is where I expect sharpshooters to come in sometime. There are Rockos, there are some Warriors, as there have been for a while, and Zeus, but really, sharpshooters are what I expect right now. Because Thug Outlaw means felons. Well, not necessarily, not in this particular case yet, but it usually means felons. Anyway, Warriors, oh man, out of position. So many of Tansticker's forces are not in a great position. Doesn't really matter, that's just a convict, doesn't make a big difference. And the bandits, of course, just die to the warrior. So it doesn't actually pose that big of a threat. But pretty soon, Kane coming in with all of these rogues, they are going to have a fairly easy time doing this. Seriously, that metal, exp that metal spot thing. I keep forgetting about that. Anyway, Kane is... I think... I think they're going to go for Felon Ball, probably. I mean, it looks like they're really trying to get the Thug Law Rogue first. Trying to make sure that's pretty solid. And Tansticker, assuming they're not going to go Felon, or at least assuming they can deal with it with the units they have, not going for Sharpshooter. And Kane, very well set up for defense. I mean, their commander should be able to... Yeah, it'll survive this. The Stinger helps a lot, but overall, the commander should be able to retreat well enough. There are defenders there. That Zeus... Okay, stopping that particular assault, but still, actually, this is a pretty powerful assault. Tansticker won't be able to kill Kane's commander, but will be able to tear apart that base and will actually secure this ramp. So their previous paranoia about this particular area may, in fact, come to fruition, as this ramp is no longer entirely under Kane's control. And Tansticker, on the other hand, going for a more frontal assault along here, and Kane has yet to take the northeast side of the map. They want to keep everything near their base. They're expanding out roughly in a circle around their base rather than expanding along the south side as Tansticker has. Like, Tansticker's taken the entire south side and is expanding northward while Kane is expanding out in a circle. They do have the center. They don't have the northeast. So Tansticker seems to be a little bit confused, actually. They're continuing to scout around. They expect Kane is going to go to the northeast. But that's not where Kane's focused. Kane's all in the south. Sorry, in the center. Center and northwest. That's what Kane's trying to do. And with the Rockers coming in, along with Brawlers, and no anti-air from Kane. This has not been called, so Kane has no idea this is coming. 
How many brawlers are there? There's one so far, and another one will be forthcoming pretty soon. Well, Kane right now, they are... They're taking a fair amount of damage, but it is neck and neck regardless. It's just a position question. Neck and neck in terms of value, but in terms of position? I mean, Tansticker is doing pretty well. They're forcing Kane back into the base. They're forcing them back on all fronts. It's just this one Zeus is not going to be able to do too much damage. The center, however, that is going pretty evenly. Kane's coming in with the bandits, but the bandits get torn apart by Rocco's. The Rockos are, however, getting torn apart themselves, and the Rogues trying to do what they can. But the Thugs get torn apart by Rockos pretty easily. And this is near Tansticker's territory, so Kane can't easily attack. Kane's setting up a front line, or setting up a defensive base. Setting up some defenders. And there's the... Where's the Brawlers? There's the Brawlers! Taking out those defenders. Taking out those forces on the ground, and that's going to be a problem. Kane probably realizes this is going to be a problem, but this is still going to be a problem. That Brawler is a pain. So the Brawler should be able to take out these four. I mean, the Defenders are the only hindrance at this point. Vandals, however, have... No, that's Convicts. Vandals are not forthcoming. Nope, no Vandals. Kane fairly confident about what they can do here. And Tansticker, they have their commander here. They have... Well, their commander pretty far forward as well. They're expecting to be able to get through without getting hit by the Skirmishers. I don't know if that's going to happen. It is a battle comm. So there is that, but even then. And another another brawler over to the north. Tansticker attacking on many fronts. And it looks like Kane is trying to defend, but I don't know why Kane's going into that brawler. I guess they just don't care. They're just going to go past it and see if they can hit the defenses. I don't think Kane knows that's there, though. Kane right now, they don't. They have no idea. Now, on the other hand, Kane is going through this ramp. They may not hold it as well as they had before, but they can still go up it. So they can still attack from the back through this ramp. If they do so, that like if they go from here and then back here, that could very nicely stop all of these. Well, okay, they'd have to use bandits, but if they could, that would stop the Rockers quite nicely. But it looks like the front has been broken. Kane forced to retreat through the center. And the thing is, Kane's particular setup, this is kind of the risky thing about this particular setup, is when you're expanding from the corner out in a circle, you're easier to contain. Tan sticker, on the other hand, starting from the center and going along the sides, they can't really be contained. If they lose one side, they get contained, but they lose a lot in order for that to happen. So they have they defend more. Tansticker, on the other hand, just has to take out this area. Just keep holding this area. Stop Kane from expanding to that. And Kane is contained. Like Kane right now already has an economic disadvantage. A pretty big military disadvantage. Has to deal with brawlers everywhere. Now we do see... No, we see Hawks. That's the response. Hawks and Swiss. That is actually a pretty sensible response and should be able to get rid of the Brawlers without too much issue. So Kane getting kind of back into this, but Tansticker able to take the map as they take this, as they're attacking, very nicely going around the map, expanding everywhere, including over along here, probably. So Tansticker right now taking advantage of the fact that Kane started in the corner and thus is much easier to contain. That being said, though, Trident's coming in to get rid of these Hawks, so Tansticker, despite losing a Brawler, should be able to maintain this pressure. I don't know how much chance Kane has at this point. Kane right now, they have no ground-based anti-air, so they have only the air-based anti-air, which Trident's counter pretty handily. They don't really have much else. They haven't gone for felons at all. No, they have gone for one. That's it. They've gone for the one felon. They don't have much of a ball to support it, though. How many thugs do they have? So a dozen thugs and convicts. That's pretty much it for shield support. At 13 minutes into the game, with plus 50, well plus 30 or so, that's remarkably low. A lot of a lot more rogues than usual. Most players don't build this many rogues if they're going for shield ball. But at this point, given how few heavy units Tansiker is going for, they've gone for a few Zeus's here and there. But for the most part, they're going Glaive Rocco. Kane losing their commander too, but they're going Glaive Rocco. So Tansiker right now, they are not going to be easily countered by rogue. They will be countered by bandits. They will sort of be countered by felons. The felons will counter the glaives, no problem. The Rockos, no, well, it's not so much. Rockos do decently well against shields. But bandits would easily tear them apart. However, that's not happening. The front line sort of getting damaged. Losing a few expand losing a few defenses here and there, but not losing much in the way of economy. Not critical path economy, at least. The, the energy isn't a big deal. Tansticker has more than enough energy. Kane, on the other hand, is way behind in metal. 21 to 51. 
So Kane right now is not doing well at all. This is basically the last stitch attack. This attack needs to essentially wipe out at least one of Tanstigger's bases. Either, okay, the southwest, no. The center, preferably. But of course, there's all this stuff over to the east side. The northeast is likely to be taken pretty soon. The southeast is actually nice and juicy and vulnerable, but there's nothing to really go to it. No bandits or anything. One of the shield by factory is that, especially if you're going for shield ball, it's hard to have units spread around. The other disadvantage is that shield ball is an inherently anti-light strategy, so heavy units tend to tear it apart. And the Zeus, against one felon, more than enough. No sharpshooters necessary here. Kane being locked into a position where they're going to lose pretty units. Looks like they're moving forward, regardless of the fact that the Zeus are being a pain and being way too close to be comfortable. A lot of these rogues are going to get knocked out by splash damage. Now they're close enough that splash EMP will probably do it, I think? Oh, no, 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 never mind. EMP is not splash for Zeus. And Kane throws in the towel, realizing there's no way out of that. And that was... Corner starts, they're risky. It's really hard to pull off a corner start. I mean, like I said, they're more defensible, but they're also har it's harder to expand out in a way that you can't be contained. And expanding out in a circle Titan duel style, on a map where your opponent can start from the center and expand out not in a corner, or not from the corner, not in a circle, it's a lot harder to maintain something that's not just going to leave you contained. I'm a little surprised Tansticker didn't take the northeast at all. I mean, that was open. That was free. They took the center east, which is still pretty good, but northeast, that would have been a lot. That would have been insult to injury, really. Anyway, yeah, I'd say the main mistake was the center start for Kane, and other than that, I don't know. I think the lack of ground based anti air probably didn't help. The lack of scouting, I mean, that's a common mistake. Not sending bandits around everywhere. That happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was educational, or at least entertaining. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.